This is the engine bay of the 2022 Toyota Corolla Hybrid. This morning, I was charging this battery because the vehicle sat for a while. We see this is a 345 LN1MF or a 45 amp hour at the 20 hour rate with 295 cranking amps or cold cranking amps made by GS Yuasa, made in Japan. This is known as a lead acid battery or a flooded or wet cell. Each one of these caps that screws in here is an individual lead acid battery. There are six of them welded together internally to produce a voltage differential pressure in DC between this terminal and this terminal of 12 volts, namely 14 to eight volts, but they have flexible voltage in automotive systems. All right, so I was using the charger to charge this, the one that's featured in my other video, and I noticed there's a bunch of stickers posted around here that warn you high voltage in the inverter here. If we go over here, it says that the brake system has a high pressure system. <clears throat> Up here, we see the location of the lithium battery, the service plug, and the lead acid battery on this diagram. Three, two, one. One, two, three. It's, it's in French, too. Okay. And then I noticed a strange one. This is the one that prompted my blog posting. See where it says R1234YF? 470 plus or minus 30 grams, so about a half a kilogram worth with the ND oil of 11, ND 11 oil, and an SAE um, number J639, J2842, or J2845. All right, well, that's a new type of air conditioning system. Now, to understand what an air conditioning system is, we can come down here and we can look down there. That is the air conditioning compressor. See this aluminum tube where it goes down, down here like this, okay? That device down there, that's the air conditioning compressor. And it's attached to the side of the engine here, okay? So there's the engine's block. This plastic is the intake. It sucks air through here, through this box, through an air filter that captures its air through this tube down here at the bottom that comes up here into this pipe right here into this intake right here, okay? All right, well, if you notice, air conditioning systems have funny pipes. So if we follow this aluminum pipe along here with the green band all the way along here, we can see that that heavy duty hose plugs into this steel line here and then it goes up here now here's the service plug okay so if you unscrew that you will see that that's a very specific type of new valve that's for this specific kind of system okay there's the the cap i'm gonna put that back And um, that pipe carries along and goes back into the cabin through the firewall right there. And the return line is below it. And that return line follows along here. If you follow it, it comes down to another service port right here. Okay, so this is the high side. The other one's the low side. So that's the high side port, okay? And there's a pressure sensor. There's a pressure sensor, that's why there's an electric wire here. There's a pressure sensor in the side of this one. And then this line actually goes down in past here into the front of the car. So if you followed that along, it goes all the way down into the front of the car because there's a radiator. So that's a fin type radiator. So fluids move left to right and those vertical fins are to perform air to liquid heat exchange. That's behind the 
that's the front upper here. So I just zoomed in through the grill. So air hitting the front of the car this way goes through this radiator and you'll see here's a fan, here's another fan over here. And what these fans do is the electric motor in the center here, right here, can spin that up and you can see the back of the radiator right there, right? So those fans help to suck air through the radiator. All right, so that's to cool the, the coolant for the engine. There's coolant lines here for the inverter. And the engine has coolant too. The bigger hose down there goes into the block. If you follow it along there, it goes, goes in there. They have, um, here's the variable thermostat controller. They got uh, for reheating the intake or EGR or something. They're using every trick under the sun uh, on this engine to comply with environmental regulations to preheat the engine quickly. I thought this was clever. They do gray, black, gray, black for the coil over ignition. So each one of these is a high voltage coil that fires the spark plug. The computer sends a signal through the wire to control the coil. And then that's a, a direct ignition system that's variable. I'm not sure what this knob is. If you know, please leave it in the comments. This is where we use the 0W16 motor oil to fill it during an oil change. You check the oil by pulling this out. And then on the dipstick, you, you check the marks on the dipstick down there like that. You gotta wipe it off and reinsert it to actually do the check. That's not the point of this video. <clears throat> the point of this video is actually to reference my blog posting about this strange air conditioning fluid. That's new. As of 2017, by 2022, almost all the automakers are using air conditioning systems like that because it has a lower global warming potential. That means an automaker that uses the new air conditioning system with this strange uh, HFO1234YF are able to get CAFE credits. And that's a corporate average fuel economy credit. So automakers recognize that the combustion of gasoline in an engine like this produces carbon dioxide as an emission. Well, it turns out that air conditioning systems like this, they eventually leak too. And the leaking, when this car is, you know, 70 years old or whatever, it will eventually leak, uh, probably before that. And that air conditioning refrigerant will go into the environment. Now, automobile engines like this typically used R134A uh, since about the middle 1990s, but uh, starting with the European Directorate uh, in 2006, by 2011, the automakers were required to reduce the global warming potential of the refrigerant gas in the AC to less than 150. So um, they were able to, using a mix of R134A and HFO1234YF, uh, get to a score of 147. And amazingly, systems that just use uh, HFO 134YF are actually only a global warming potential score of one. Uh, R134A by itself is a global warming potential score of 1430. So a significant reduction. One of the things I like and dislike about this car since I'm talking about it are these integrated LED lights here. They're cool, and the projector lamp is cool until something breaks. Then you have to change this whole module, and from Toyota, those are about $1,000 each. So, um, I noticed a couple of strange things. There are funny little ball, mechanical ball mounts here. And I don't know if this gasket is pinched. Can you take a close look at that? I don't know if that's pinched or if that's supposed to be that way. It almost looks deliberate, but I doubt it. So it might just be a glitch in the design. Maybe at some point they they pulled the, the valve cover off of here for some reason. I don't know, I bought the car used with 26,000 miles on it for a substantial discount. All right, well, that's the end of the scope of this video. I just wanted to mention that the cool new refrigerant is more eco-friendly. It is slightly flammable, so they have to use, it says it here too, they have to use a special oil, ND11, so that 
um, it reduces the combustion liability or risk. All right, well, thanks for watching my YouTube video. Have a beautiful Sunday.